This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. I know it's not always possible to head to the store and make a dish from scratch, and that's where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can stop rotating the same few recipes and try something new every time. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BABISH65 for 65% off plus free shipping. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the spaghetti a la Amatriciana from Eat, Pray, Love, the basic ingredients of which you can see laid here before me. Now we're going to make three different versions of Amatriciana, starting with the most traditional. For this, we're going to need four ounces of guanciale, an Italian cured pork jowl, which once we slice off the herb-crusted exterior, we're going to cut into la dome, or what I like to think of as very, very thick matchsticks. This will hopefully make the meat easier to eat with the spaghetti. Once that's all chopped up, the only other mise en place we need to prepare is pre-grating one and a half ounces of Pecorino Romano cheese and locating one fresh red chili. This is a Fresno chili, which is decidedly not Italian, but it will do. Now over on the stovetop, we've got a two-pot configuration to make our pasta. First in a large, cold saute pan, we're starting to cook the guanciale over medium-low heat. This stuff has a lot of fat that needs to render out first, otherwise it'll be chewy, so if it's browning too quickly, don't be afraid to add a splash of water to help things along. After about 10 minutes, once tender and beginning to turn crisp, we're adding eight ounces of high quality tomato puree. And that's pretty much all that's in this very, very simple sauce that's gonna cook for 10 minutes, except for that chili, forgot the chili. And since our high quality browns dye dried pasta takes about 10 minutes to cook, this is also the point at which we can add eight ounces of spaghetti to a nearby shallow pot of boiling salted water, cooking it about one minute shy of its intended doneness before adding it to the pan, where it's gonna finish cooking in the sauce. For that reason, it's very important to add a large splash of pasta cooking water, about half a cup, plus more as needed, both to finish cooking the pasta and help the sauce emulsify. Once it's cooked to our desired degree of doneness, we're gonna season to taste with freshly ground black pepper and hold off on the salt, because first we're gonna kill the heat and add the cheese, mixing with great rigor and adding splashes of pasta water as necessary until the sauce lightens in color and becomes almost creamy. If you got hunks of unmelted cheese, don't worry about it. Just place the pan directly over the simmering water and use the residual heat to take it the rest of the way. Now you can season to taste with kosher salt and once you've fished out the spicy pepper, this guy's ready to pile into a shallow bowl, twist it into nests using a carving fork for food styling purposes, garnish with extra cheese, a little sprinkle of salt, and some pepper, why not? And there you have it, traditional amatriciana. I really hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. Now, the newest addition to our staff, an associate producer named Nico, has professed this to be his very favorite pasta dish, so I wanted to get his take. He's not here to record voiceover at the moment, but he told me that it was really good, but not spicy enough. So let's see if we can make it gooder and spicier. First thing we gotta do, as you might have guessed, is make our own pasta. I'm starting with 10 to 12 ounces of semolina flour, dumping that onto the table and forming it into a very wide volcano, into which I'm going to deposit six ounces of beaten eggs, using a fork to start beating together the eggs and the flour, trying to keep the walls from tumbling down until I can incorporate as much of the flour into the eggs as possible. But at a certain point, you're going to have to abandon the way of the fork in favor of the bench scraper and beginning to knead once all the flour is hydrated. Now, I said 10 to 12 ounces of flour, but you might want to start with 10, because if the dough ends up too wet like mine did, it's much easier to add flour than it is to add moisture during its five to seven minutes of kneading by hand. Once the dough springs back with enthusiasm when poked, we can wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest for 20 minutes before beginning to roll out. Now I have a tendency to under knead my dough because kneading is hard. So if your dough is feeling a little too crumbly or rough around the edges, you can strengthen its gluten network by laminating it, folding it over on itself like a pamphlet and re-rolling until it becomes smooth and somewhat elastic. Bear in mind with semolina dough, it might be rough around the edges no matter how much you do this. So maybe only do this like three times max before rolling it out to spaghetti thickness and passing it through your cutter. Now, under kneaded pasta dough is perfect for the extruder, the ultimate I really care about homemade pasta accessory. The hopper in a pasta extruder beats the hell out of little pieces of dough that you throw in there, so fully kneaded dough can come out soft and sticky, but slightly under kneaded dough comes out just right. Activate spaghetti guillotine and thoroughly coat every strand in extra semolina flour. You can't overdo this, and doing it extra thoroughly ensures that your little nests of pasta won't stick together. You can cover and refrigerate 
marinate these guys for up to 24 hours any longer and the pasta is going to start to discolor and become gross. Now for the sauce, in the movie you could see whole chunks of fresh tomato. So I got four large on the vine tomatoes, into the bottoms of which I'm going to cut a shallow X before dropping carefully into some boiling water for about 15 seconds. I said carefully Andy, don't embarrass me. Once the shallow cuts begin to split wide open, we're going to plunge these guys directly into an ice bath, which is going to make their skins very easy to peel off but leave their interiors uncooked. Once relieved of their skin, we're going to quarter and seed these suckers, hanging on to all those interior seeds and juices and then chopping the tomatoes into a medium rough dice, making sure to press all those tomato guts through a fine mesh sieve to retain all that beautiful tomato flavor solemn seeds. Now for the meat, I'm sticking with guanciale, but this time I'm cutting it into very thin slices, ones that I think will be even easier to eat with spaghetti. Then I'm going to commit the cardinal sin of adding onion, which looked like it was visible on the plate in the movie. Last up for the spice factor, I've got some Calabrian chilies here. These things are having a moment right now and I'm very grateful for it because they taste really really good. Once seeded and chopped, we're ready to get started. Same procedure for the guanciale, but once all the fat is rendered out and it's nice and brown, I'm scooping out the pork, draining it in some paper towels, and then in the resultant fat, sauteing my small half a chopped onion. About three minutes until it starts taking on some color and softening, then I'm adding my chopped Calabrian chili, letting that saute for about 30 seconds, taking off the heat if necessary because guanciale fat smokes pretty easy, and then deglazing the pan with two ounces of white wine and another, dare I say, daring departure from the original recipe. Once that's almost entirely cooked off, I'm adding one cup of our chopped tomatoes and their juices, along with an additional six ounces of tomato puree. Cooking this guy once again for about 10 minutes, but adding our fresh pasta to the water right at the end because it only takes about two minutes to cook. Cook your spaghetti to a state of al dente before adding straight to the sauce, along with some pasta cooking water. I don't know why I'm still using the slotted spoon. At this point, I'm committed to it. Tossing and cooking together minimally so as to not overcook the spaghetti. Then I'm going to finish this guy with a good glug of high-quality Italian olive oil, along with the requisite Romano. Mix and emulsify those into the sauce off heat, and then it's ready to pile proudly onto the plate. Put that carving fork to non-carving use once again, and just like in the movie, garnish with a big ol' sprig of basil. And there you have it, non-traditional, from scratch, and I hope movie accurate, pasta alla amatrician. If I didn't pronounce that right, I swear it's because I have a cold. Now, I might be biased, but this stuff has a deeper, more complex flavor, and to Nico's delight, it is significantly, but not overwhelmingly spicy. And even though he tried to abscond with a bowl of pasta, his boss was there to lend a helping hand. Now, just in case you're watching this at 5 p.m. and Valentine's Day dinner is like now, I want to try making a quick and easy one-pot amatriciana. We're starting with four ounces of some of that cube pancetta that you see in the hot dog section of the grocery store, and sauteing for four to six minutes until it's beginning to crisp and brown. Then we're adding an eight ounce can of crushed tomatoes, making sure to scrape up any good stuff that's on the bottom of the pot, adding a half teaspoon of crushed red chili flakes, and letting this guy cook for about 10 minutes until the liquid has reduced and the sauce is starting to look a little dry. Then we're adding 12 ounces of water because that's roughly how much is absorbed by a half pound of pasta. Immediately start to stir and shake it up so that it doesn't stick together. Cover and simmer over low heat, stirring frequently for a few minutes longer than the manufacturer's specified cooking directions. Adding water a quarter cup at a time if things start getting too dry. Then once the pasta is cooked al dente or to your preference, it's time to finish it same way as before. Add the ounce and a half of grated Pecorino Romano cheese and another quarter cup of hot water if things start to get too gluey. And there you have it, one pot spaghetti a la amatriciana. The stuff only uses a few simple key ingredients that's on the table in less than 30 minutes, and it still tastes really awesome. You could mix and match almost any aspect of these three recipes to suit your taste or time frame, and rediscover what you love about you without having to tour the Italian countryside. And even this quick, easy, non-traditional version got the Nico and Kendall seals of approval. We've already eaten a lot of pasta today, but somehow this guy still ended up in the Clean Plate Club. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients and recipe cards mean you get a home-cooked dinner on the table quickly and easily. You can even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides and choose the delivery dates that work for you. They have options for carb smart, vegetarian, family-friendly, and more. There's something for everyone. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BABISH65 for 65% off plus free shipping. The link is in the video description.